Hello, welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian and this is my workplace. So, product review time and something completely off the wall. Um, as you can see from the box, it's Trumpeter's 135th scale Japanese ground self-defense force, it's a title and a half, type 87 AW. Um, and it is the Japanese take on the uh, German type Gepard vehicle. So we've got two uh, twin anti-aircraft cannons um, on a turret on a tank hull so um, I saw this one and I thought well yeah, it's quite an interesting vehicle didn't realize the Japanese had done one of these and there's, there's obviously loads of um, information on the um, Meng uh, Gepard um, and also the British Army take on it uh, when they tried it on a, a chieftain hull but this is this is Japan's effort so I thought I'd give it a punt and we'll have a look at it and see if you guys are interested and have a look at it so Let's get it on the table, enough waffling here, and we'll have a look inside the box. There we go. First of all, um, no box art. We're looking at a real photo, which is a refreshing change. Uh, so we're looking at a kit number. Ooh, where's the kit number? So kit number 01599. And we've got a length of 229.5 mil. Width of 91.5 mil, and we're looking at 540 plus parts, and that's probably because we've got individual link tracks, so that's going to take up a lot of the part counts. So we look on the side, we've got a bit of blurb about the weapon system. There we go. On the end, it's just a repeat of the box top, and on the other side, we've got a color rendering. Got some photo which in there, one in 14 years and over. And another sturdy trump to box. So, opening the box, we've got the instructions, publicity, blurb, got the hull, and loads and loads of plastic. So, let's have a look at the instructions first, as we usually do. Right, so we've got a colour call out for painting instructions and it is just one standard uh, green and brown camo scheme. So you're looking at H7222 which is uh, Orc Earth and then H320 uh, which is dark green. I'm sure I use Tamiya colours for most of my paints. I'm sure Tamiya will actually have the right colours for this because they do quite a lot of Japanese vehicles as well. Right. There we go. So, first page, we've got the standard trumpeter sprue map of all the parts. And then we go straight into construction of the lower hull. Uh, we've got all the wheel stations towing points and tensioner sprocket idler wheel it's a very simple bathtub hole construction which is fine it goes together and it's solid so moving on to the next part we're looking at idler wheel road wheels drive sprocket bringing all that together then we're moving on to the tracks now it looks like we've got a jig here, which is fine to get the sag. In fact, yep, yeah, that would be the top sag. So you can see that there. Um, it is individual links, and we're looking at 81 links per side. So that's 162 links. That's 162 of the part count gone. Now, trumpeter tracks are usually pretty good. They clean up very well from the sprue, and they go together very well. That's my experience, so it shouldn't be a problem. We've got some... Plastic parts here to complete the wheel, um, the fenders, and then we've got what looks to be parts for the light units. Then we move on to the top of the hull for part six. So we've got the tow cables, we've got some photo wedge for grill vents, which is fantastic. Uh, we've got vision blocks, vehicle lights, and we've got mud guards going on the reverse of the hull top. All very simple stuff. 
So part seven, more stowage items. So we've got some storage box, pioneer tools, uh, we've got light guards going in and a whole hush of um, louver vent grill covers. Uh, we've got what looks to be possibly a jack going together for stowage, yeah, for stowage going on the top. We've got more PE going over the light guards. We've got handles for opening up access hatches and then more vent cover meshes. Um, we've got some lifting handles. And then on to part eight, more PE vent covers. So this, the, the vehicle's going to look really good for this level of photo etch. And it's great that it all comes with a kit, saves you having to buy any extras. Um, I don't actually know if there is any extra sets available for this kit, so that's another thing I have to say. But anyway, part eight into part nine, so we're bringing the hull top to the lower hull and the rear of the hull in. So it's quite a simple construction, detailed though. Part ten, we've got stowage basket at the back of the um, vehicle, as well as a couple of stowage box, and that completes the lower hull. So that'd be fine to actually paint all this up and get it ready and then you can set it aside we'll wait for the turret which is part 11 so we've got the turret tops the turret bottom coming together and then we're moving into vision blocks uh, vent covers and other greeblies that i'm not sure what they are i'm no expert on this vehicle but we've got lots and lots of detail um, we've got things like antenna bases we've got carrying baskets um, hatches saying no cement, so we've got workable hatch, which is really, really good. Then we're on to the radar assembly. Um, and the radar itself for part 14. Bringing that together to part 15. So you've got your receiver, your radar and receiver. And you can either have that um, deployed or closed up. To be fair, if you're going to build something like this, you may as well have it deployed with the guns elevated as if it's taken on an aerial target. Part 16, we're starting to build up the nacelles for the guns. Uh, finishing off with bringing a two-part barrel together. It's going to be interesting to see how they manage to get around that one and make it as we can minimise the seam. It does appear to be a fluted barrel, so that might actually work in the modeler's favour. Part 17, we're looking at the opposite side. So you've got right and left. Part 18, bringing those together with the turret top. Smoke discharges um, into 19 and 20, and then 21, more smoke discharges. So you've got um, front and rear, bringing it all together. And there's bits of photo etching amongst that, which will add to the detail. And then 22, bringing the kit together. Wow, that looks like a really impressive kit. Let's have a look at the plastics. Now we may as well start with the big bits. So we've got a little hull lower, hull upper, and turret. Make a bit of room here. That's one thing you're always short of on a modern desk is room. Knife. So start with the hull lower. So trumpeter individually bagged, heat sealed, which is good. Good to protect all the parts. Right, really nice trumpeter plastic. That's crisp, sharp plastic. We've got beautiful detail here. You can run your finger over the bolt heads, they're beautifully raised. Uh, we've got weld lines, we've got drain plugs. All the bolts in here for the final drives nicely molded um, doesn't give us a date but it does give you the model type in there no very little flash as well sometimes trumpet can be a little flashy but that's a nice hull right yeah we we'll like that so let's have a look at the whole top now now in the instructions this looked like a really detailed part There's the turret bottom. I'm not going to bother getting that out of the packet. It's just the bottom of a turret. Okay, so looking on the reverse side, I don't know if you can see that. Put my finger behind there, but all these louvers are 
open. So they're molded right through, which is fantastic. And that's a really, really, really nicely detailed top hull. I don't know if you can see that in the light, but we've got, obviously, the louvers are see-through, and then we've got all these patches of anti-slip all over the hull. All the panel lines are crisp, consistent, and quite fine. So it's going to take, you know, don't overload it with paint, but it's still going to take a wash beautifully. We've got louvers moulded on the side. They are not all the way through, but that's not to be snuffed at. That's still a beautiful bit of moulding, and that must have been slide moulded to get those fellas in there. So, yeah, I'm really impressed with that. That's a, a nice hull, and let's be fair, this is going to build up to be quite a large machine. The hull will fit on something like that. Yeah, that's that's not going to be a small machine. That's going to be a, a beautiful model when it's done. Right, turret top. There's not much to it, so I'm not going to bother getting out of the packet. But the bits that really are important are the top here. You've got the access hatch, and the level of detail on this reflects the level of detail on the whole top. Uh, the bolts are beautifully uh, raised, and where necessary there is the recessed panel line but as a turret goes yeah it's really nice so i'm going to leave it in there just to protect it but it's really rather nice right we've got a whole hush of sprues we've got one one two three bags of tracks again trumpeter tracks are fantastic if i can get that without having the glare on the plastic you can see they're beautifully detailed the attachment points are a little bit chunky, but nothing that can't be sorted out. Um, and a quick, if you get a nice pair of side cutting um, snips, sprue cutters, and f cut them flush, a little swipe of the sand and stick, these things will go together beautifully. Um, and I've built a number of Trumpeter Hobby Boss kits, never had any problems with the tracks. Right, we've got a sheet of photo etch. So here's all the grills that you were given. Um, and it looks like XPM, so really really nicely etched and the attachment points for each part are very fine so the cleanup should be very good you won't be able to file or sand these due to the fact that they are so pierced um so they're, of course they're pierced they're, they're a mesh but due to the fact that it's a very fine mesh they'll be quite fragile so you'll need a sharp blade and cut them very close to the part and you shouldn't need to do any cleanup but they're they're beautifully etched there is a decal sheet. There's not much to it. Trump the decals will be okay. So you've got two scorpions, what looks to be a parrot with a lightning bolt, and then a bat symbol. Got some lettering, numbering. So perfect. Right, let's get into the meat and bones of this. Let's have a look. We've got two two sets of road wheel bags we have two sets of idlers and primary drive and then we have one two three other sprues from that so let's just get the road wheels out I'll only do one because they're all doubled up so it's actually not a lot of part count really when you look at it the thing that's going to take your time is the tracks and the photo wedge. Right, road wheels. Set one aside. Again, camera's picking that up. The detail is beautiful on the road wheels. So we've got fine recessed bolts on the edge of the rim, and then with the hubs have got the more pronounced raised bolt detail. The wheel station arms look really rather chunky and solid, which is fine. And then we've got grab handles that are beautifully finely moulded. If you're not wanting to replace them with metal ones, you could quite easily use these. Um, we do have rubbers on the wheel. It is a very, very shallow rubber tyre, uh, but there's enough of a, a ridge here to the steel rim that you could actually paint these by hand and it wouldn't take any time to get them done. So I'm quite impressed with that. That's really nice. There is a little bit, I've got to show you that on the back, there is a little bit of flash just on the road wheels that will need to be sorted out. 
but it's nothing that is beyond anybody's capability. Right, next one. So in one of those, this is the sprue that contains, we've got half a gun barrel and some detail parts as well as a drive sprocket and idler wheel. So drive sprockets, beautifully detailed. Um, that's going to take a wash fantastically. And it is up to Trumpeter's usual quality. They're, they're always a good model manufacturer. Some of the sprue connector points might be a little large, but again, if you've got a good pair of side cutters, you're not going to have any problems. Now here is half the barrel, and the barrel is fluted, and the join is on the top of the flute. So that should make it easier to join together. However, you need to be careful with the glue, don't flood it, let it dry thoroughly before you then try and go back in and clean it up. So, this is a sprue with. We've got the other halves of the guns with, I'm assuming this is a coolant system or something, or a targeting system, this wiring along the side of the barrel. Beautifully molded. If you look at the muzzle brakes on this weapon system, they're beautifully molded. Very, very fine detail. Um, oh, one piece wire mesh. There's a bit of flash on that, but I'll let them off on that because that's been a hard piece to mold. That flash will clean up no, no problem at all with a scalpel blade. So that's well done, Trumpeter, for at least giving it a go. That could normally be made into three or four parts, which would be a pain in the rear end to put together. We've got some really nice checker plate detail in here on some of the turret tops. And all in all, really nice parts. Really nice parts. Right, um, this part sprue here is sprue F. And it contains the, we've got the parts for the turrets, for the guns, which are fantastically molded. There's a lot of detail molded into those parts. Even down to the weld lines. Yeah, that's really nice. Well done, Trumpeter. Again, good clean up off the sprue. Sensible use of glue and the cleanup should be no bother. Here is the track guide for the top runner tracks to get the sag built in. So that's really, really nice as well. Um, what I would suggest is that you, you build the runner tracks up on the bench, get them glued, and whilst the glue's still tacky, then just mold it into this line, rather than trying to assemble them on here, because you'll glue it to there and you'll never get the tracks off and it'll be ruined. So that's how I'd work with that. Um, but that's really, really nice that you get that to mold the sag into the track. Uh, second to last sprue, let's save the smaller sprue for last. So this is more hull parts. So we've got the rear hull basket which is beautifully molded. It's really quite fine plastic. We've got the front track tensioner idlers. We've got the rear hull plating. We've the light guards here and the light clusters. We've got the tow cable, which is actually quite nice. It's not too flashy as well. That'll clean up beautifully. There's no much burring on it. Just have to be very, very careful as we take it off. So very, very sharp cutters to get that off without breaking it. And there's some more louvers, which are not molded all the way through. So they are closed in, but they'll still look fine. Um, yeah, and some really small detail parts here as well. So really quite a nice kit. I'm impressed with this. And last but not least are the clear parts, which, to be fair, I am not going to take out. You've got two light lenses and, what, seven uh, vision blocks, which is not much at all. Trumpet of clear parts are always very, very good. So there we go. That is the, the parts for the kit, and I have to say they look really rather nice. Um, so I'm going to get them all back in the box, get the camera turned around, and we can sum up on what we think. So, oh, there we go. Trumpeters 135th scale Japanese ground self-defense force type 86 AW Thoughts Well, actually quite impressed um, This is an unusual subject and certainly one that caught my eye 
simply because I didn't realize it existed until I saw the model. I thought, yeah, that's actually not bad. But this keen price on eBay, it's retailing around about the £40 mark, £45 mark, which is actually really quite reasonable when you think of all the stuff you get in the box. There's a lot of detail parts. There's enough uh, photo etch enhancement. Uh, there is certainly going to be a sizable model when it's done. And it's of an interesting subject. Um, Anti-aircraft defense system is obviously a hot topic at the moment with everything that's going on in the world. And this is certainly one that um, will, if you build up and put on a display table or a display shelf, it'll catch capture people's attention because it's, it's unusual. It's going to be a large vehicle and it's going to be something that's really, really poseable as well as um, easily um, detailable and usable in a diorama. So um, really, I have to think that's just kind of a recommended. Trumpeter are not for the inexperienced modeler. They're definitely for a modeler with a bit more experience about them. However, they go together reasonably well. The instructions are simple to follow. And looking at these parts, they're reasonably flash free and they're from a very good quality plastic. So I can't see there being any problems. So definitely highly recommended. Um, if you want to change um, or do you want to step up and do something a little more advanced than the standard 35th scale kit, definitely pick one of these up. So thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, put it in. Answer, put your questions in the comments, and I always take time to read and answer them. Um, if you'd be so kind to like and subscribe, if you if you like what you see, then that's fantastic. Um, and stay tuned because I've got more stuff coming. Um, until next time, guys. Stay safe and happy modeling.